So let me just rewrite the problem. So the problem was this. Find the number of non-intersecting lattice paths from but between any two points, but yeah. <clears throat> number of so this is wrong, number of pairs of non-intersecting. Otherwise, it doesn't really make much sense, but yeah. Pairs of non-intersecting. So uh, to begin with, let me just keep a number here and then we can see. So we can take five comma four maybe. Okay. So uh, this problem we had introduced last time motivated from some earlier problem. So has have any one of you tried or made any progress? <clears throat> This was the last class we did on counting, where you remember we were doing the, we did a combinatorial proof of the num of uh, this answer to and choose n square by considering pairs of parts. So this is another question on pairs of parts, but it's about this I had given in the end of the class. <clears throat> so everybody forgot about this maybe. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, that's that's right. okay. All right. So uh, this, so this question can be very different type for those for those who may have, may have done a little bit of cat and numbers. You may get some sense of what it, but it's not a prerequisite or anything. We're not going to use the word cat or even any formula from there. But yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certain cases, right? Because in Catalan numbers, if you see, so Catalan numbers are a kind of special case of this, but not really. Uh, if you look at Catalan numbers, so the problem here is the problem in Catalan numbers is, uh, well, one way to put it is this is the line, and then you want to find the number of paths that don't go above this kind of pass, which don't go, which don't cross. But then basically you can shift this line and you can say that number of paths which do not intersect this line, right? <clears throat> right, number of paths which do not intersect this, uh, this line. And basically that, this is so basically Catalan numbers is also then uh, a problem about counting pairs of non-intersecting lattice paths but one of the paths is a constant path, the straight line y equal to x, uh, x minus one or x plus one, sorry. You see, right? One of the paths is kind of constant, right? One of the paths is constant and then we want the rest. So you see Catalan numbers is also a similar kind of question though it's never maybe seen like that. And all this can be generalized in some theory later on. But we are doing problem in which the paths vary. Both the paths are varying. So it's not harder or easier, it's just a different problem. So let's see. But yeah, but what we are going to use from the uh, Catalan numbers the idea is we're going to do some sort of a subtraction principle. And there also for those who have done, so I'm not going into details because I don't assume it. So let me just quickly do a mark this. So we are, so the hint for now, which you guys can think is use complementary counting. Okay. So
basically you want to find the number of intersecting paths. So think meanwhile, I just trying this precisely because the analysis will straightforward generalize to m comma n in this case <clears throat> hmm So certainly that will that way you will get a subset of the answer, but uh, yeah, but that will not. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's a good observation. And let's see if we can use that. So, but yeah, Chandan, what you're saying, that's I mean that you that way you'll get a subset, but that the rest of the thing will not be easy to count also. So it's not a good division of the problem. But yeah, that way you will at least get a lower bound that it is at least bigger than that much, right? So that you can use in that way. But yeah, the observation is that, uh, yeah, P1 and P2 must start and that's already clear, so. Yeah. So, so if I just call this X problem X, let me just draw this and we will try to build on what Adish has said to make the paths purely non-intersecting because as of now, the paths are intersecting at the end points, obviously, right? By non-intersecting, we mean not intersecting in between. End points are obviously intersecting. But we can reduce the problem to uh, not intersecting at all. That's the first step. So first, let me draw a picture. On these two parts. And what we want to do is using, so what Adesha said is like, if this will start, if, if, if P1 starts, if the first move of P1, let me write that. If I think that will then just straight away give the what I'm trying to say. If first move of P1 is up, then then what's the last move? Can anybody say of P1? has to be right. That's right, yeah? Does everybody agree with that? Because they cannot intersect. Yes, does everybody see that? So now it becomes a pure question in the sense that that's, that's always a good thing to do in mathematics. Like the problem statement becomes more elegant. We just follow that. I mean, obviously, this is not some like I'm giving you, or oh, this is how it could be done. No, I'm just saying that because it's not a simple problem. But the steps we are learning, so this is ideas. Yeah. So everybody agrees with this that this will be right. The last move will be right. 
So make, make sure of this. Anyone has doubts why the last move should be right? Because see, if the last move is also up, then the paths have to intersect somewhere in between. Is that right? You can just see that intuitively. If the So this path goes up, but then it also goes up here, right? So at, at some point you can kind of argue that it has to cross because then this blue one has to go up, right? A kind of, so the blue one's last move will be right. And so they will kind of have to cross at some point. Is it clear with everyone that that's happening? Okay, all right. Try to write this because this is yet nobody has given a, I have also not given a mathematically precise reasoning, right? So proof. And similarly for P2 also. Okay, similarly for uh, P2 also, same thing happens. So with this observation, what does a problem reduce to? Path from where to where? Yeah. So then the problem reduces to, I'm just writing that because I think we can, we can see that more or less, number of pairs of, let's write it in full, number of pairs. Okay, if I just write it in half, maybe later on, it can, number of pairs P1 and P2. <clears throat> starting points are uh, 0, 0,1, 1 comma 0. This is the possible starting point and ending at four comma four or five uh, five comma four. No, so uh, but what will this be? Five comma three. I mean, essentially it's more than that. It is this and this is respectively and because that's what we just saw that it cannot cross, right? It cannot, yeah. So now it's a purely, you know, um, non-intersecting question. So now we can kind of forget about this too. And forget about this and Now, how do we count? So now you can think about complementary and you will also realize that complementary counting is, you can just try and see that it's not a bad thing to do. So we will instead focus on the number of intersecting paths in, in this. So if you just use complementary counting, so I mean that total number of paths, you know, in this situation. Yes. Right. Right. So let me, let me say this, uh, write this word respectively here, otherwise it can create confusion. So I mean respectively, okay, because you see we have, if you just think clearly, right, if we want P1 to start from zero comma one and end at four comma four, right? Because that, that's what it is, right? I mean, you can call that P1. And you want P2 to start from here and end here.
We just need to count pairs of paths like this. We are not interested in paths that go from 0, 0,1 to 5, 3 or something like that. We are not interested in that. I mean, at least in the statement. Hmm. No, that's intersecting. Yeah, intersecting means not sharing anything at all, right? So, that's intersecting, yes. This So this will be intersecting. Okay. So using complementary counting, this problem reduces to number of intersecting. So now we, because when things intersect, and once again, those who have done Catalan numbers, you would know that's where the reflection principle is applied. That is where the reflection principle is applied. When they intersect, then they kind of reflect and they convert it to some canonical, like without any conditions. But for those who have not done, no problem. I mean, I'm not assuming that at all. Number of intersecting paths from them writing the same thing again 0, 0,1, 1, 0, and 4, 4. And then we can subtract from total. Total you can count. Let's focus on this. So then let me draw a picture which intersects. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you see, the paths may not be parallel. Like this example is parallel, right? Um, because if you so, so, so let me let me let me draw a path which intersects with the green path first, right? Then maybe you can reframe what you are saying. Because here the reflection line, because there are a pair of paths, right? If you reflect this path, the blue path, then what do you do with the green path? And how do you use the fact that they're intersecting? So, yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, if you can directly count the number of uh, non-intersecting paths, that's another thing. Yeah, yeah, I can understand, yeah, yeah. But, but here, but you have to make it more precise. So reflection line, if it's, Yes, yes. So let me let me just quickly draw our intersecting one. Then you can say it with reference for that. Maybe it'll be better. Uh, let me draw in such a way that we see all the features. So I'm changing both the paths. So one second. One second. Huh? So I just want to draw a picture which. Uh, 
Oh, leave it. Ah, it's gone. Just frame it and I'm just drawing it once again. So here I can do, then I can do here, then here and here. So yeah, it's intersecting at the change occurring points, but that may not always be the case. It can intersect here also, but so one second. So now we have this. So I've drawn an example of two intersecting paths. The green one is uh, starting from the red and the... Okay, now, yes, Rasubro, yes. You want to start from zero comma zero to five comma four. Okay. Okay. So you are, you are doing this problem or the direct? Okay. Oh, you're doing the direct one. Okay. Meaning the non-intersecting parts. Oh, okay. Okay. Then you should. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Then. Okay. So right, right is I. I is what? Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, that is. You can the name of the part and Okay, so P one is a sequence of uh, five I's and four J's, right? Right. How will that? Uh, uh, so you are doing okay. So let me just write a sequence. Can I? Yeah, let's do that. Then I or just maybe few of them. Yeah, just still here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. J no, so this should be different. So let me write that note that. So this is J. Let's say J I. Okay. <clears throat> right. So you're taking the coordinate wise difference. That's an interesting. Okay. Hmm. Total sum should be zero. Yeah, does everybody see that? Because they're both using same number of i's and j's, right? So total sum of all coordinates equals zero, right? But how is that a path? Okay. There. Okay, just notation. So this is p dashed. <clears throat> they intersect if. Hmm. at the point of intersection. Yeah, so you can, uh, or you can just simply say that uh, if they intersect at the kth step, then the sum there also will be zero. Same thing, right? <clears throat> okay, so let me note that if uh, P1, P2 intersect at kth step, 
kth step is a is a not is an unambiguous thing because if there's a coordinate um 2 comma 3 then it's the fifth step okay something like kth step then p dash restricted to k terms uh yeah sum of coordinates okay no there are other things uh -huh. hmm no we are not considering them as moves this is just a new algebraic entity just a sequence of i minus j's j minus i z and zeros so don't think of p prime as a path right rather not to write p prime at all just p1 minus p2 p1 minus p2 is yet i mean it is you can interpret it as a diagonal southeast and so on but not interpreting it as a path okay we are not interpreting it as a path yeah but rasu bro you see there is a i don't know but you see there is a there are three kinds of terms in your sequence So, okay, I minus J. No, but yeah, but this is not Catalan numbers problem because there is a there are zero, there are zeros also. So it will not be. It's not cat. Yeah. I mean this see this you can say directly also because if two paths don't intersect right and one of them starts from so basically you have said this in a in a fancy way this is a probably more useful to for solving but you can see this so if and it's not very it's not going to be very useful maybe as far as i know but yeah then there are generalizations which maybe you can use but maybe they are harder than this problem so the point is that if there are two paths and maybe yeah if there are two paths like this which don't intersect then this is like clearly true i mean okay if they intersect then yeah so if they don't intersect then you can kind of understand right that the number of so the above the path that goes above you can understand right i mean at any at any given x at any given you know k when you know the x when the x coordinate is k you see the y coordinate is more right and those are the kind of things that is just encoded in this thing so yeah but how can oh, no that's fine uh, he doesn't uh, it does not not matter because we are going to count uh, number of pairs of paths which don't intersect he's going to do that so he that doesn't matter right i mean he's trying to directly count the number of paths that don't intersect so then uh, then basically is looking at sequence of you know x's and <clears throat> x's and minus x's and maybe the problem is that there are zeros also and that makes the problem so it's, but it's a good way to see this is like a generalization of catalan numbers so i was kind of vaguely saying that in the beginning of the class and that was my perspective and this is probably a better way to say that it's kind of a gen and it is a generalization of catalan numbers for three terms so that's a very i think well done thing right because this is a problem on it can be on its own and it's a very and either way it's very interesting so this kind of thing okay but how do you count that in fact if this kind of problem is given to you uh, if you can reduce it to path problem then probably it's better <laughs> easy to solve otherwise i don't know you can get some generating function and some theory you can use but you have to think So basically, you have to go by the number of zeros, maybe, and number of intersections. Then you have to reduce. So, Rasuru, you see, you can write a recurrence at where the points where they intersect, and so on. Because between each each recurrence, it becomes like a sub problem of smaller number. But then you have to do all that work. It's going to be long thing, long way. <clears throat> and not in. So we are trying to do like bijective, so a little bit easier way. But that's an.
Hmm. J minor. Yeah, you could use. Um, yeah, but uh, I don't know how to use that. Okay. But in fact, there is some. Okay. I mean, no, so you could so. Basically, the point where they intersect, you can use that as a reflection point. Okay. So let's see. <clears throat> that is that's the thing that is used in Catlin also. So let's see. And that's the way I'm going to do. So I'm going to kind of convert intersecting paths from here to here, from intersecting pair of paths in this way to just normal paths. But you see. <clears throat> Suppose these two paths intersect, right? Suppose this is the first place where they intersect. Now, from here, I can basically reflect in the sense that I can exchange the rest of the path. Okay, so the recipe is look at the first intersection point and exchange the rest of the path. In theory, this is called a tail, uh, but yeah, first intersection, intersection point and <clears throat> Then what happens? So a light blue, light blue thing will come and yeah, green, this kind of will become green. <clears throat> so I've taken a pair of intersecting paths. And I've converted them to another pair of intersecting paths. So what have I done? Have I done anything? So P1 is from was from 0, 0, 1 to 4, 4. And we had from 1, 0 to so this was P2. Um, not a very good notation, but we can use this, I think. This. And I've converted this to a path from 0, 0,1 to 5, 3. <clears throat> and this is the P1 prime, maybe. Right? The multicolored. No, I mean, yeah, multicolored path with the green before. So is the construction of P1 prime clear, right? I've taken the green path as it was, but when the tail, sorry, when the intersection point comes, the first intersection point, I swap, I swap the rest of the path, okay? So then it is very clear. It, it becomes from one comma zero. Starting point, I'm not changing. Four comma. And this is a clear bijection, right? Any intersecting path from 1, 0 to 4, 4, and I mean any pair of intersecting paths like P1 and P2 can be converted to a pair of intersecting paths, intersecting paths, intersecting paths, yes, intersecting paths from just the endpoints are switched. Okay, just the endpoints are switched. So is this okay with everyone? That the problem is reduced to yes. So if we first come back to the original pair of paths. So you basically have to look at the first place where they intersect. The first point of focus is look at the first place where they intersect. Okay, this orange thing that I've circled. Okay, the green path and the blue path. The first place where they intersect is this orange point. 
And from here, I swap the rest of the path, exchange the rest of the path. So what, the, what should that mean? Right? It means that the rest of the green path becomes blue path. Right. This becomes blue. So now it's clear that P1 prime is this path that's going up this, 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 this. That's what you get when you exchange the rest of the path, right, for P1. And then you can do the similar thing, same thing for P2, right? So, so I'm sorry, the, what I said was wrong, right? This is, so this, this is P1, this was P1, right? But now P1 is going from here to here and from there it's going to catch the other path simply. It's very straightforward. And that means it will become this. The rest of the P1 will become this. And this is the P1 prime. Similarly, you had this P2 going like this, right? But then it intersects here and now it takes P1's path from after that. So they, they exchange paths. Okay, it can be given in very interesting combinatorial kind of ways. Okay, uh, some games and so on. And so rest of it becomes this. So now you see, yeah, everybody can just see if it is okay. How I'm constructing the new pair of paths. If there are any questions, you can should you should clarify. I mean, you should obviously go back and think of this again, but it should be clear, at least in the example, it should be clear. So should I assume that it is, so you are exchanging the rest of the path. So what the problem has reduced to is number of intersecting paths from 0, 0,1, 1, 0 to 4, comma. so this is now 5, comma 3. The one that starts from 0, comma 1 now ends at 5, comma 3 respectively. Okay, but in the very beginning of the class kind of, we made this observation that all such paths have to intersect. So we have used this reflection and converted it to generic pair of paths. All such paths have to intersect, right? This observation we made in the very beginning and I didn't say it, okay? One of you said it, I think Adesh said it. From zero comma one to five comma three and then one comma zero to uh, crisscross, yeah, crisscross. Yeah, so you can you can reason in some way, but you see. So this is basically all, this is all, all paths uh, from, and can we quickly count this? This, so this is five minus zero is zero, uh, five minus zero is five and three minus one is two. So that's seven, uh, seven choose five, right? Times from one comma zero to four comma four, This will be what? Seven, seven choose three. Yeah, seven choose three. This. Because all such paths, so we have, you know, we have done this complementary counting. So the complement, so the intersect and intersections, you can play with them. Okay, you can reflect and so on. No, because no, right? because they can intersect somewhere in the beginning also maybe, right? Somewhere here they can intersect, but that will not happen in this case. Okay. And that was the benefit of reducing this problem to the more pure version.
Okay, I think yeah. So reducing it to a more pure version as we did in the beginning, which again we kind of did from some observation, right? It's what it is. Okay, so take a minute and see if this is clear, and then I will just write the final answer, and then we will do the more observations. We try to see it as part of a bigger picture. Take your time. That is, don't rush this. Try to go over the things and see the ideas, pick the ideas. Okay, so in the end, it's a very simple thing, right? If you, hmm? yeah, okay, okay, yes, yes. Horizontal lattice. Uh, you say it, say it in another way, maybe. Uh -huh, yeah. Four comma four. Yes. So why did I do this? Because see, any path that was from zero comma zero to four comma four, and one comma zero to five comma three, which was not, which was intersecting, which was intersecting, right? After exchanging the tails, it becomes from zero comma zero to zero comma one to five comma three, right? And one comma zero to four comma four. Is that okay? Because the tails get exchanged, and so we need to count the number of intersecting paths of this pairs of intersecting paths of this type, but any pair of paths of this type has to be intersecting. Right. Ah, so then the problem becomes like without any condition. Right. Then it's just all pairs of paths from 0, 1 to 5, 3 and 1, 0 to 4, 4, which is trivial. Right. Uh, how can you say that again? I think that is a good reason. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh -huh. 
Um, yeah, but is that more clear than just saying crisscross? Yeah, um, anyway, so that, that you can, that you can, I, I don't completely see why that is more obvious, no, that makes it more, but the fact that any such pair of paths intersect that you can just try to prove, okay? You can put some many plus minus signs and just, you, we already have a condition for intersection at some point it becomes equal. So you can, you can base on that. Yeah, leave that. Okay. So then what's the final answer? See the final answer, uh, obviously the total number of paths from zero comma, uh, zero comma one to four comma four, right? Because that was first, right? The complementary, we're doing complementary, right? So we have to subtract this uh, from the total number of pairs of paths from 0, 0,1 to 4, 4, which is, what is it? Seven choose, um, what is it? So it's seven, seven choose four times. So this is one comma zero. So this is, have I made some mistake? <laughs> Either this is wrong, right? So let me see. So this is zero comma one to five comma three. So this is five, two, so this is seven, seven choose five and one comma zero to four comma four. No, no, uh, this, the last thing. Yeah, that one also we have to do, uh, but one minute. So the last thing is zero comma one to five comma three. That's seven choose five. With some small calculation, one comma zero to four comma four. That is how much? Seven choose, seven choose three. Okay, now this is what is, and the total number of paths is Total number pass from zero comma one to four comma four is. How can it be the same bit? Yeah, it cannot be the same thing. It has to be different. Zero comma one to four comma four is seven choose three. Oh. And then what's then something is wrong. <laughs> One minute. So yeah, because see the total number of paths we know, right? So let's let's write that. So So we are looking at, so number of pairs of paths from zero comma one to four comma four and one comma zero to five comma three. Okay, total number of pairs of paths. This is, uh, let's say, if you find this out, this is simple. And if you subtract this from uh, such paths which intersect, and then we get the answer what we are interested in the non intersecting paths. Right, that was the basic thing about the subtraction principle, right? Which we're doing complementary counting. <clears throat> okay. 
because in the beginning only we reduce the problem to that we are interested in pairs of paths from 0 comma 1 to 4 comma 4 and 1 comma 0 to 5 comma 3 right we are there our universe was that and from that universe we are subtracting those paths which intersect okay and that we have reduced to another question but okay this total but then why is it coming or how can it come out to be the same so but do you see this is this is the question uh -huh. oh, this is seven but this is seven c oh yeah so it's not the same i'm just i was just making a silly mistake again and again yeah it's seven choose four times seven choose four right and this one was seven choose five times seven choose five times seven yeah it's not the same it cannot be the same right All right number of such paths which intersect we have reduced that to number of paths from this crossed thing but the tails are reversed okay so this is the final answer okay this is the final answer so we did this a little slowly but i think it's important to understand so let me write a generalization of this okay yeah let me write a generalization of this so number of parts again so number of pairs of parts from so in the beginning i just write it like this 0 comma 0 to but you understand the essence of the question is to reduce it like this the way we did like that's the first step reduce just to make the problem more pure which will help you to generalize the problem also number of pairs of paths zero from zero comma zero to m comma n which don't intersect well don't intersect in between so can anybody tell the answer to this based on i mean everybody knows the answer in in sense but can we say it quickly right and this will be this will be squared right this will always be squared because i mean these two parts are kind of have the same weight same number of because we are basically looking like first we'll reduce it right by saying total number of parts on zero comma one time minus one comma n and one comma zero to m comma n minus one. And we'll try to count the non-intersecting ones in that because that's what the problem is, right? Because non-intersecting paths must start at uh, opposite directions and so on. And then we subtract it. And this will basically count number of paths from here to here and number of paths from here to here because those paths have to intersect. And because we will be counting the number of intersecting paths. So, number of so from total we'll count the number of intersecting paths from here to here but those paths we can exchange and get basically paths from 0 comma 1 to m comma n minus 1 and 1 comma 0 to m minus 1 comma n see M and 
again uh, this one will be m plus n minus 2 c yeah obviously asymmetrically okay this this is the formula but it is not just about the formula you see the form of this thing that's the type of number this is okay so this is like so this number has a meaning obviously one meaning is that it is number of non intersecting da, 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 right but it is also the determinant of a matrix a very natural matrix like formulaically it is not just coincidentally right so obviously you know what matrix to take so yeah so if you take a a that you can exchange it doesn't matter so the answer is the determinant of this matrix now i i want to ask her okay before i do that let me say a little bit more here maybe i should remove the should have removed the upper calculations rather than this the terms of the determinant are also combinatorial because they are chooses here but they are also very simple things it's like so a is the number of what is a so a is the number of so i have to again not write everything just m comma n okay so what is a this a is a is the number of paths from one comma zero so let me just call this a and this b or this a one and a two right that's b one and b two okay fine so a is the number of paths from a one to b one right so i'll just write the matrix as number of paths from a1 to b1 and that's the 1 comma 1 that's the 1 comma 1 entry now you can fill up all the entries right yeah and this this a is also a2 to b2 by the nature of our special case and then this is the one comma two entries number of paths from so just the language that we are putting it's is becoming very simple to talk about it right and this two comma one is and you can that's what we have done putting it like this you can you see it becomes very simple the complexity goes in the complexity of the formula of determinant the complexity of the formula of determinant simplifies the picture because it takes care of the complexity it gets encoded in that now the picture is so simplified so simplified that if i ask you for a generalization you can tell me the answer you may not be able to prove it but you can tell the answer and you know what I'm going to ask. If you take three points, and you can write a suitable, it's a coordinate, whatever, minus two comma, whatever. Or you can write something. No, it's not minus two, it's uh, two comma minus one, right? Yeah. And similarly here, you can make three. If I ask you the same question, okay? 
and this will this will kind of be the number of triples of paths maybe from 0 comma 0 to m comma n but no right so let's not so that is basically that was not a pure question right that was not a this is the more pure question okay so now you're basically looking at the number of paths starting from a1 to b1 going from a1 to b1 and a2 to b2 a3 to b3 number of triples of paths which do not intersect okay and that is obviously you know what the answer will be that is going to be the determinant of this matrix m where the ijth entry of m is the number of paths from ai2 and the ijth is starting from one i is not zero that's proof this is your homework okay try to prove this basically for three case And I not induction may not work here because because you can understand the new the new AJ AN comma BN that comes in it creates a big big difference right the n minus one paths if they don't intersect the nth one that comes in it not intersecting with any one of them yeah maybe you can use induction. that's uh, not not n yeah n new entries actually yeah it basically it's making two n minus one entries but n new entries yeah right i think how do you if you want to use induction or do you want to use a similar kind of thing okay let's see and this is a combinatorial meaning of determinants just uh yes 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 so see what we have proved is if there are two if there are two pairs of points like a1 b1 and a2 b2 and you understand what the coordinates of a1 b1 and a2 b2 are okay so then if you have to count the number of non-intersecting paths from a1 to b1 and b2 number of pairs of non-intersecting paths from a1 to b1 and a2 to b2 respectively then that is some comp some formula like this but it is more elegantly stated as a determinant of this matrix, right? Now, if I generalize, now if you ask yourself for three triples of non-intersecting pairs of paths, triples of non-intersecting paths, where this A3B3 has also come in, where you can understand what the coordinates are. You can just mark. So this is M, M plus one and minus two. And similarly, you can mark this. Now, if I ask the question for, yeah, no, yeah, so that's a method, but I am saying, what will the claim be? The claim becomes trivial to make, right? That it should be the determinant of the three by three matrix where the ijth entry is the number of path from AI to BJ, right? It becomes trivial to conjecture and it like, you can be like confident that it should be true. That is the main thing. That is the main thing. Proving also is similar. Proof is also similar, but the conjecture is easy to make. Okay. So we will try to do this the next time. Okay. But we will also do some other simpler kind of one because this will help us not, this is no more like a much combinatorial thing. It's more like understanding determinants, determinants well and doing some combinatorial, some other technique. But understand. No, because when the it comes here, this B three is coming in a separate. Right, M plus one is coming. So, so I don't know how to put it in that terms. But in the more pure version, you can state it. You can generalize the more pure version. Yeah, so that should not be difficult. You will have to maybe go two, three steps back instead of one step back, right? Okay. 
No, but the point is that for 0 comma 0 to m comma n, the problem is not good because that's not a good problem. See, you understand that right? the real problem was from 0 comma 1 to m comma n minus 1 and 1 comma 0 to m. Yeah, this is m comma n minus 1, right? That was the real problem that we solved. Do you agree? All of us agree, right? That was the real problem that we solved. And that is the that is the more pure version which we can generalize. It's also pure because this kind of non-intersecting has a real meaning there, right? It's well defined there in that sense. Say, mathematically, you can you know that's a real thing. So that's where that's what I'm generalizing. I'm not generalizing zero comma zero to m comma. And in fact, you cannot generalize that right? because triples of paths they have to intersect. You see that also you can see. Just you can see based on the first two moves. There we don't have three directions. And so it yeah. so you see the the, the 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 version which was not good in the beginning mathematically it didn't really look that good also it doesn't generalize also so math works like this this is a mystery thing okay so obviously I don't know but some it it seems to work a lot of times like this so try to do this and um, we can pick this up next time and. Okay, now let us just discuss the calculus. I mean, I didn't plan to, I plan to do a lot more things today, but it's, it's fine. This is, we learned the techniques and yeah, now we'll learn about determinants through this, the combinatorial side next time. Okay, I think I can stop the